So here you'll see in part five, the 4R70W transmission that will be put into my 2002 F-150. This video, I wanna talk about the shift accumulators. Now with uh, 215,000 miles on the clock, I decided that I wanted to change these shift accumulators because in most of the material I referenced, it indicated that any leakage in any of these systems can cause poor transmission performance, poor shift performance. So while I had the, th the valve body off, I thought <clears throat> this is a, a great time to replace these shift accumulators. I've already drained the entire transmission. Um, relatively easy access underneath the vehicle. So you'll see in this transmission that I've already removed all of these shift accumulators. One, two, two, three, overdrive, and reverse. Um, here I've got them on a workbench and with the one, two, since I bought a shift kit, this comes with springs that will improve the shift performance on this 4R70W. The two, three, the tough plate that I bought actually comes with a cap for this portion of the shift accumulator that prevents this from damaging the, uh, the separator plate between the transmission and the valve body. On this one, the overdrive, there is an upgraded feature that I purchased that also helps to prevent leakage, and that's replacing this pin. You can buy from Sonax a pin that has O-rings. Uh, the standard pin does not. It's a, it's a close-fit machining, uh, but because of the wear on a, a transmission that has over 200,000 miles on it, I wanted to make sure that I had all the leakage prevented, and many of you will probably experience the same thing I've experienced, overdrive shutter. <clears throat> so I wanted to make sure that I had good fluid flow, good fluid control. So when I bought the overall shift accumulator set, I bought this as a kit, which is relatively cheap on Amazon, I upgraded the pin on the new overdrive uh, accumulator with the pin from Sonax. What you'll see here is a tool that I bought. You can do some research on the internet to find tools to pull the shift accumulators from the valve body, or excuse me, from the transmission. And I'll, I'll show you that uh, in a moment. Uh, but these are readily available out there and it makes your job significantly easier. The valve body has been removed and uh, that work is being done. Uh, I've done a lot of the work already. Now I need to work on the shift accumulators. Uh, and I'm also going to replace this EPC solenoid which was recommended by the shift kit um, company that uh, says that these can be get weaker with age, especially high mileage transmissions with this one being 208,000. To me it was a good idea. Uh, these accumulators need to be removed. I've got a special tool for that. In this photo, I have the 1-2 shift accumulator shown. The upper is the old and the lower is the new. I didn't have this problem, but, but I've heard many do that the springs will break on the 1-2 shift accumulator causing shift performance issues. Um, just watch out for that. That's another good reason to go through this if you, uh, if you decide to do a valve body project, although you can change the 1-2 shift accumulator without pulling the valve body. You can see with the old accumulator that's been pulled, there's a significant amount of friction material on here. I've uh, wiped some of that off just to show how much just settles on this. Uh, this one's a pretty easy one to change. Here's the new one. Um, with the old spring on it, I'm going to be installing this uh, next. If you decide to replace the pin, as I referred to before with the Sonax unit, which will give you better sealing, you're gonna to have to probably get some help because you're gonna to have to compress this spring while removing the C-clip. Then this will come out, the pin. You can replace the new pin. You'll have to compress it again and replace the C-clip. What makes the overdrive shift accumulator unique over the others is that when removed, it actually disengages something inside the transmission case that you have to be very cautious about when reinstalling it. If you look inside, I've located the overdrive band, and right here, that's the pin coming off the overdrive accumulator. It has to engage this portion of the overdrive band, 
what you can see is that it's actually penetrating past. What that means is that engagement of this during normal operation and transmission will not engage the overdrive band and you'll have problems. The easy way to take care of this, which Ford designed into this, is to take a screwdriver and push it down into this slot. As you push it down, you'll see that the band is pulled down, which gives you the opportunity to now remove your tool that's holding the shift accumulator in place, and this will engage on the pin as it's supposed to be. So I'm not going to bore you with installation of all the accumulators. It's obvious it's, uh, it's the reverse of the removal. Uh, just make sure that you lube them up with transmission fluid effectively before you put them in there because since that casting is machined, the edges are very sharp and you can damage the, the sealing rings that are on all those accumulators. If you have any questions, please leave those questions below and thanks for watching.